So we have another surprise box. I don't know what's inside. And I have like 10 batteries coming, so I have no idea which one this one is. So there's a box inside of another box. It's having a baby. Oh boy. One piece. I don't think these are cells. Oh my God. I think I know exactly what it is. No way. Oh my God, it just came. This is great. This is a white label Renogy lithium iron phosphate. So this is the same one that they sell for like $900, but I got it for like $500 off of AliExpress. And we're gonna test it out. And the total cost was $538 with tax and shipping for a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop in lead acid replacement. But I have no idea what the quality is like and we really need to open this thing up. And right now it's $800 to $900 for the same size battery. It's the same one as the Renogy. It even has the strap holes, the top is like identical. It is the same battery for half the price. I don't think Renogy is gonna be happy that I'm making this video, but all oh well. This is not sponsored by the way. I'm buying this with my own cash. But before we open it up, we need to do a capacity test just to make sure that the capacity rating is true. And we should weigh it. And this battery is 10.4 kilograms or 22.95 pounds. A Battleborn has the same capacity, but it's 30 pounds. So this is a very lightweight battery. I'm not sure what they're doing. It might be prismatic aluminum case cells, but we're gonna find out in a second. Even compared to Sino Poly Prismatics, those are 26 pounds. These have the same capacity as this thing. So, and this one doesn't even have a BMS. So this thing is very lightweight. Something I just noticed is that the Renogy is 12.75 kilograms, but this clone is 10.42. So this might actually be a totally different battery on the inside, but this might be the shipping weight. So it's hard to tell. Now let's test the voltage. We are at 13.49 volts. That's a good sign. So we're gonna charge this battery up all the way and do a quick capacity test. So this battery actually arrived practically fully charged. We're already at 14 volts in less than five minutes. And the reason the voltage was lower earlier is because the voltage settled after they charged it up. So this is a fully charged battery. So Hall Effect sensor is at the terminal and we're gonna do a load test of 0.2C. I have no idea how well this test will do. I have to wait five hours until this is done. So we'll be back in a bit. This cheap battery is actually pulling the full capacity. That's insane. We have 143 millivolts, so this thing is completely dead. And I'm gonna try to charge it back up again. You guys, it's in safety mode, it won't charge. That's okay, because we have a bench top power supply. So we're just gonna do it manually. Ta-da! Wow. So we got 105 amp hours, you guys. 1,329 watt hours, that is so good. I really expected this thing to fail halfway through the test. It just did not feel good when I was doing this test, but it actually held up. It did a good job. This case is sealed shut, so we're gonna have to actually cut into it. <laughs> Look at all that glue. No way, you guys, we have aluminum case prismatic cells. Oh, nasty. Ooh, no way. Oh my God, I know what cells these are. That smells so bad. That cannot be good for my health. Guys, they just like slapped a ton of glue in here. All right, guys, this is a joke. <laughs> this is not good. This is the cheapest possible way to do it, and it's pathetic. So first off, we have two 10 gauge, 10 copper wires for 100 amps. That's not good. And on the side of the battery, we're using foam squares. And whoever built this part, they just slapped that in there. That is so wasteful. And the balance leads are soldered to the copper bus bar. That's not good. But they are using 105 amp hour cells. That's why we got 105 amp hours in our test. And these are good cells. Every single one I've tested has been great. And they're the same ones used in Lion Energy. But everything else around it is pretty bad. God, you guys won't believe what I just found. You won't believe this. I just found a Dally BMS on the side. We need to pull that out. That's crazy. 
God, what a mess. God, what were they thinking? This is so stupid. Come on, man. This whole thing's glued in here. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> so this is the BMS they're using. No wonder these do not have low temperature cutoff. They're just using off-the-shelf Dally BMSs. And this is so badly put together. Why would they do this with the glue? It smells so bad. So now that this is done, I'm going to stick this outside because I cannot have this in the house. This is horrible. So check it out, guys. This is a joke of a battery. You do not want to buy one of these. This is horrible. I do like the cells, but that doesn't mean much. Most lithium iron phosphate cells are great, but it's the stuff around it that matters. And how that BMS was mounted with the balance lead at the bottom, these wires were being bent. And using cheap foam as a filler and just slapping this stuff in here, it just, this is not a good battery design. And using two 10 gauge wires when the competition is using at least double that, that's not good at all. This is just pathetic, but it does have a good capacity. That's pretty much it. All of these are third party things. They buy these cells for cheap. They buy a Dally BMS. They buy a bunch of glue. They buy a $20 case and they just slap it in there. Rinse and repeat and they do that all day. And I actually have these cells coming from a distributor for very cheap. It's like $440. So you could actually make this battery yourself at the same price, but with a much better case or maybe at a higher voltage battery and use a higher quality BMS or something. This is just silly. But something I found interesting is these are 105 amp hour cells, but look at how tiny these terminals are. This thing is so tiny. I mean, how big is this? It's a size seven, you guys. Isn't that funny? These are really micro little terminals. And no matter how much glue you put down there, this balance lead could get pulled out during shipping, just like it did on the Ruxu. So yeah, just a horrible design all around. I am so glad that we opened it up though, because I was not expecting that, especially the Dally BMS. That is so funny. Honestly, at the end of the day, you're better off just buying your own cells in a $50 BMS and make your own case. You guys can do better than this. This is crazy. If you're spending money and you want to drop in solution, you might as well just make your own because it takes like 10 minutes to slap a BMS on here. What I want to know now is if Renogy has this same setup. This might be a different battery than the Renogy. And I'm sure you guys have noticed this after opening many batteries. A lot of them have the same case but different internals. So you never know what's inside. And as we learned from the Ruxu, sometimes you'll have a different battery every couple months. They can swap out components whenever they please. And I know a Battleborn is a lot more expensive than this, but there's a reason for it. There's no low temperature cutoff. This will be instantly destroyed if you try to charge it on a freezing cold day. And you have an actual warranty and stuff will not fall apart. I just could not trust this. There's even, no way that one of the bus bars has scratch marks as if they were trying to cut it with pliers. I mean, look at these bus bars. These are made by hand. They do not look like... Look at the manufacturing tolerances on the bottom. There's an actual curve. So yeah, this is cheap, you guys. You do not want this. So yeah, more videos to come. We have some cells coming and lots of other batteries. So yeah, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you guys think below. So yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.